Hi, thanks for joining us for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. Summer is about over and it is time to change out the flower beds. Today we are planting violas. Also, garlic adds great flavor to food and it's easy to grow. That's just ahead on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Joellen Diamond. Ms. Joellen's a TSU Extension agent in Tipton County, and Lucas Holman will be joining us later. So we're out at the flower bed. Yes. What do you think? Wow, look at the bat-faced kufia, how it they have good. grown. Uh -huh. That actually got bigger than the Dusty Miller this year. It did. Year. Good choice. Good choice. Yes. I, I definitely like the way it looks. And then, of course, the Euphorbia mm -hmm. Diamond Frost here looks nice. It does. Um, then we have some red begonias, of course, they got swallowed up. <laughs> yeah, there are a few back here. There are a few of them yeah, in the few. back. And the Angelonia, it kind of got swallowed up, too. They all lived, but some just outgrew the rest of them. Right, and the Dusty Miller still looks good, don't the you The Dusty think? Miller still yeah. looks good. And you know, we, even though it's a biennial, we, we planted it, what, last, last fall, oh, it was yeah, a year it was ago. Last fall. Sure was. We, so we've gone through the winter season and the summer season change out. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try to see if we can get another season out of season. them. One more season, okay. Yes. One more season. So we'll see what they look like when we, uh, okay. uh, pull all of this stuff up because now is the time. I know it looks beautiful. This is a, I get this all the time. <sighs> Everything looks beautiful, but this it's time tough. to change it out because if we don't change it out now, then it's not going to look good, you right. know, later in the winter. This is always the tough part for me though, it, taking it hard. out because everything does look good. It is hard. Right. But and we'll, I think the ground is good too. I mean, yes. evidenced by you know how well the plants grew. And we haven't yeah. amended it for a, a, it. Yeah, we did a it while. like the first year, uh -huh. and then we haven't done anything since yeah, except for fertilize it. So, all right, it's time. Let's, let's get to the hard part. Yep. All right, this is tough. There's a bit going you down here, Heidi. Get pretty big. I might need this shovel for this. This thing has a massive root system. Oh wow. Yeah. Bat face kufi has done very well. Wow, look at that. It's massive. You got a begonia with it. No, do I? Yeah. I'm not coming up. There it goes. Yeah, that one was massive. Okay. Well. Well? Got so what, a do you think? Here. what do you think? I think, I think the Dusty Miller are going to look fine. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and keep them yeah, for one more season them. and see how they do. One more season. We'll clean up a little bit. Okay. The bat faced kufio is has some large root systems it in did. it. It took out some of our soil, so we're gonna have to just make sure this is even enough. I think it's looking pretty good. Um, probably consider doing a soil test on it soon ah. because I think we need to know where we're at right. with the pH so we'll do that soon. All right we got to practice what we preach right? Right. I oh, gotcha. Mm. Well All I right. think it's time to put some fertilizer down. It's I'll a slow this. release fertilizer and there's all different kinds but you definitely want to get one that is slow release. Okay. It'll feed over a long period of time. You don't need a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I right. think it's time to put a new layer of, of mulch and then we'll plant, yeah, we're gonna plant way. violas okay. this year. Uh, we're just gonna cover the ground with this because it's pretty organic and we're just trying to hold the moisture 
in. We're not trying to make a deep area full of mulch, just cover the ground. All right, we've got some pretty violas here. Mm -hmm. It's called a sorbet harvest mix. We've got a dark purple, a yellow, and an orange. And I've also got some true blue to mix in with it. So that should look nice with the Dusty Miller we have. So we will set these out. We're going to kind of randomly space them about six inches apart because violas are smaller than pansies. So we want to make sure they'll fill in together. Uh, we lay them out so we make sure we have enough to go over them evenly and they're evenly spaced because you can start spaced. planting and then your eye forgets how close they are or far they are apart. How do you determine how many flats you need for an area? Well, you go, um, you, you have a width and the length of the size of your bed and depending on what plant you want, mm -hmm. then you're gonna divide that by how many inches you wanna set them apart. Okay. So this is the last few? The last few. Okay. All right. Whoops. That's all right. All right. Now we're ready to start planting. I'm ready to plant. A nice thick color around this dusty miller. Okay. It'll stand out. Well, we look at the root systems and we see they're nicely rooted, mm -hmm. not root bound, which is good. Right. And we want to plant them so that the, the top of the plant here is where the soil level goes. You right. don't want to cover the crown of pansies or violas. Okay. Because they have a real low crown and you don't want to bury it or else they will die. Okay. So I would plant it just a little bit high, dig a hole, move over the mulch, dig a hole, set it in, and then bring the dirt around to it and don't cover up around the crown. Don't the cover crown. up. All right, gotcha. We had pan we've been using pansies okay. and Dusty Miller and kale. We've done a, a lot of different things. Um, we've got a little more shade now with the trees and with the Dusty Miller. And I wanted to try violas, see how well they do here. Violas can take a little more shade and look nice than, than pansies can. And violas I like because they have lots of blooms rather than just a few. They're, they're small blooms, but they are filled with blooms. So we'll see how they do. If you find any dirt clods, you need to break them up into your organic matter that's there, and they will eventually go away. All right, Joel, and here are the last two. Got the last two. Yeah. I mean, kind of easy getting this in the ground, though. Real yeah. easy. We uh, loosened the soil a little bit by taking the other plants out and evening up the ground. All right. So what do you think? I think that's going to be done. It looks nice. Evenly spaced. Evenly spaced. Nice color combination. Hopefully, they'll fill out and fill in and set off the dusty miller. We'll get another season of use out of the Dusty Miller. All right. Can't wait to see what it looks like. Thank you again. You're welcome. All right. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. All right, Lucas, let's talk a little bit about garlic, because I understand you really like garlic, don't you? Love it. Uh -huh. How yeah. much do you love it? Um, it's basically used as a condiment in my household now. Okay, so, so you do love it. Every night. <laughs> every night. Yeah. All right, well, look, let's talk about some good garlic cultivars, okay? Tennessee is a great line because we can grow either soft neck or hard neck cultivars. Okay. And if we were kind of discussing the difference between the two, soft neck cultivars of garlic need to be grown in Louisiana, Florida, Texas, some of the more warmer regions. Now hard neck need to be grown above kind of zone seven. So Tennessee is mm. basically right on the line for being able to grow both. 
Some of my favorite ones that I've grown over the past few years, my favorite one is kind of pictured all over the table here is Purple Glazer. <laughs> uh -huh. It's a hardneck variety of garlic. The only problem with hardneck varieties of garlic is that they don't last long in storage. Okay. So a lot of the ones we get commercially at the store, they're all soft neck because they'll last in storage upwards of a year. Hardneck cultivars of garlic will last only about five to six months. So by the time I get around to November, I'll usually, whatever's left over, put it back into the ground. Okay. Some other ones that people really like around here are chestnut red. Mm -hmm. um, and one that I really like this year that's pretty warm whenever it's eaten raw is called Bogatier. Bogatier. So you'll see mm -hmm. a lot of different heirlooms and a lot of different companies selling all sorts of different kinds. And I would hate to take a guess at how many cultivars there are. Uh, available today but there are quite a few and Tennessee's blessed that we can grow any of them so oh, so that's a good deal yep. now let's tell the people what's the difference though hard neck and soft neck why do we call them hard or soft neck? all right kind of showing right here hard okay. neck actually develops a flower so down the center of the bulb you'll actually have a flower it'll pull up and twist okay most people who are growing it break off that flower because it sends more energy to make a bigger right. bulb and we're growing okay. garlic just for the bulb right we don't not a huge fan of the flower to begin with. <laughs> All right. We want more garlic. That's right. So the soft neck cultivars don't develop a flower. So you actually, if you cut them diagonally kind of across the bulb, you'll see that a hard neck has a long stem down the middle and all the ones that we get commercially at the store have no uh, kind of stem down the center of the bulb okay. so they don't develop a flower. So that's the main difference between hard neck and soft neck cultivars. One develops a flower, which is the hard neck, okay. and soft okay. neck does not develop it. Good stuff, good yep. stuff. All right, now. How do we properly plant these garlic though? All right, this is one of those crops that's so easy to grow. Is it easy? Oh, oh you we would like believe easy. it. Oh, like easy. I think more people need to grow it because I, right. whenever people ask me, I want to start a garden, they never ask me, I want a high maintenance garden, what can I grow? <laughs> right. You're right. They want low maintenance type right. things to grow. That's right. And I think at the top of the list is garlic. Okay. So if we're doing this because really, there's really not any pest diseases, that's nothing good. really eats it. That's good. It has rare diseases, so really nothing bothers it to begin with. If you really can't grow this, you probably shouldn't be gardening to, the, to begin with, actually. <laughs> All right. Um, the proper planting in Tennessee, we need to plant it about October to November. Typically, okay. and I'm actually near Nashville, I like to plant it about the first weekend of November. Okay. So you'll actually see it develop kind of a green stem through winter, frost, snow, anything throughout the winter time, and it will still do fine. Oh, that's good. So about the first weekend of November, the last weekend of October is a, an excellent time to plant garlic in Tennessee. Okay. pH range, uh, does that matter? It much? likes it a little bit slightly acidic. So if you read some of the research on it, if you can get it, 5.8 to wow. 6, it'll okay. do fine actually, but most Tennessee soils are very fine sure. uh, for growing garlic. Okay, now here's another question somebody may be thinking, what about fertilizer or organic matter, compost, or what oh, would you recommend using? Anytime organic matter you can add to the soil is fantastic, and I think it always helps out with aeration. Sure. Because what we're trying to do on this is we're trying to get root growth in the winter time. So typically when someone asks me, what do I need to fertilize it with? Most Tennessee soils have phosphorus and potassium mm -hmm. already in it. But the only thing we need to add is nitrogen. But if we add too much nitrogen, we're going to get beautiful foliage uh -huh. and no bulbs. No bulbs. Right. So typically, whenever someone asks me, it's usually about a half a pound per 100 square feet okay. of just nitrogen. So phosphorus and potassium are typically there, but a soil test is the best way to there tell you what you got in your ground to begin with. That's right. So that would be the best way. And you do not fertilize after April because May and June is when we're focusing on bulbs. If we fertilize with a lot of nitrogen, we're gonna get all this excess growth, and we don't want that right. in May. We want bulb growth. <laughs> there you go, okay. All right, so how about harvesting? All right, what I do is I typically wait for the, the plant, the bottom few leaves to go brown. When I have five or six still green leaves on the top, that's when I dig it up because each leaf represents a shell around the bulb. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I want five to six shells around the bulb to last in storage. So whenever I get five to six uh, green leaves still on top of the, the plant, I dig it and I hang it in an open air barn out of the sun uh -huh. to dry. So I'll actually tie, tie them in bunches together and throw them over the rafters in the barn. <laughs> and I want wind to get all the way around okay. it. And I don't want it to be in sun. Uh, we've had some people put it in their garage and garages yeah, get really yeah. hot. It's best if you've got a back porch that's out of sun to hang it on that back porch. And it'll keep the vampires away too if you have <laughs> issues with that. That's right. <laughs> hey, you can't talk about garlic without talking about vampires, right? That's exactly right. right. Hey. Everybody mentions that's it. That's right. So what about storage? So storage. We want to get these stored. Once yeah. it actually gets cured, so this is one 
once it's actually been cured inside my barn, I actually go through and I cut this off and I'll actually cut the roots off and I will hang it around my house in little bitty netted bags because it's stored, it's stored fine once it's actually dried. Your goal is to get it dried before you bring it inside your house because a lot of people's houses are really humid and if you bring it inside the house once it's been in the garden for a long time and it's still got some moisture in it, it can rot. So we always tell people before you bring it inside your house, let it completely dry or cure and then it'll last until you want to plant it or uh, or eat it. <laughs> wow, so, so completely dry. It needs to be completely dry before you bring it inside because people, some people's houses are really humid, some are cooler than others, and it kind of varies in temperature and humidity. Okay. So we always say make sure this is completely dry and you can break some of the leaves to see if it's completely dry and then just cut the top off and throw it away and then um, I just think it's best to store it in little bitty netted bags, not in plastic. Not in plastic. Not in plastic. Okay. Yeah. And, and why not in plastic? Because it'll rot. Because it'll it, rot. Because okay. if there's any moisture left right. in there, we want it to uh, to not rot. <laughs> right. That's yeah. right. You know, you're growing these perfect garlic. We don't want it to rot, right? <laughs> you see, right. Ex because we want people to grow more garlic. That's right. <laughs> okay. Now let's talk about some uh, excellent resources for there more information are, about garlic. I actually got hooked up growing garlic whenever I was working in a nursery in Cookville, and there was an er <laughs> owner there named Jay Frankenfeld, and he was really into garlic. So when I worked there, oh, it's been years ago, he said, you need to just start growing it because I grew up in a household that was deprived of garlic. My mother <laughs> hated garlic growing okay. up, so I never had it until I moved out on my uh, own. Right. So then I, when I moved out, I discovered the flavors of garlic and really uh, enjoyed it. But, but the best book that I found is actually put out by Timber Press. This one's called The Complete Book of Garlic, and it's read by, written by Ted Meredith. But it goes through the sections of storage, cultivars, and it goes through kind of in the back section of all the different cultivars that he's been able to find and how they grow. So uh, it's probably 150 different cultivars sure. in the back of this book, and it's a really good picture and description of each one that's available. And we're still discovering a lot of the heirloom varieties wow. from some families whenever they come over to the U.S. So. Wow. So there are resources about garlic. Plenty I mean, of there's resources. A lot of pages there's plenty book. of books, and this is probably my favorite book so far. Okay. Yeah. And if people wanted more information about garlic, they can come see you at yeah. the Wilson County Extension Office? Yes, I am the Horticulture Extension Agent in Wilson County, and Wilson County is the county directly east of Nashville, so I'm kind of in the heart of Middle Tennessee, and I've uh, lived there for a... Uh, about eight years now, and I've oh, enjoyed well. Middle Tennessee, but okay. uh, they can contact me if they've got any questions or concerns about their garlic. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. You have any concerns or questions about garlic? Lucas is your man. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you. All right. Appreciate that. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. See how these canna leaves are all rolled together? This is a sign of canna leaf roller. So we're going to cut these off, not only, you know, to get rid of the ugliness of the canna leaf, but we're also going to try to see if we can find the leaf roller in here. The leaf roller is a worm. That's why you, you can see the worm's excrement. Oh, there he is. He's right here. They spin a web that it rolls the leaf together, keeps it together, and then they stay inside protected from birds of prey by eating on the inside. And then they emerge as a, some type of butterfly. And to get rid of them, you can just spray BT on them and they'll ingest that. And uh, the problem is getting to them from that because they are rolled up in the leaf. You might want to point the leaf down and kind of unroll it and then spray them. All right, Joellen, here's our Q&A session. You ready? Ready. We have some good questions here. All right, here's our first via email with a picture. What is wrong with my hydrangea? And this is from Renee right here in Memphis. Guess what, Renee? It, I had the same problem with my hydrangea I was going to say, it looks home. like mine. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it could be mine. Uh, <laughs> right up against the wall of my house, right against, you know, uh -huh. um, it gets no air circulation there. <laughs> Circospora leaf spot is what that is yeah this time little. of the year you have the late summer rains mm -hmm. guess what the leaves are not able to dry off like they should because it's right next to a wall mm -hmm. you're going to get that yeah fungal disease cercospora leaf spot yeah and you know the easiest way to get rid of it is just to have better air circulation you gotta and, have good air and, you know it's interesting because the wine that has that is the only one that has it because it doesn't have a wall, but it has a wall of shrubs uh -huh. that let no okay. air circulate around it. Uh -huh. But the others that I have that are out, 
don't seem to have that. So mm -hmm. air circulation is probably the number one. It is important. That that and and make sure it's not wet around there. Right, right. They, you know, keeping it too wet will cause it to to get the leaf spots too. Right. Practice good sanitation. That's what you need to do. Pick up those diseased leaves because mm -hmm. the spores are still on the leaves. They're still going to be there. So, yeah, if it's raining or you water those leaves, okay, the spores will splash up, mm -hmm. start with the lower leaves, and just kind of flares up the plant. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about using a fungicide, especially this time of the year. Not this time of year. Right. No. Uh, because, yeah, if you read the label, you know, some of those fungicides, guess what? It's like every, what, 10 to 14, 15 days. Yeah. If it rains in between, then it's like it never happened. You had to go back there and spray again. Yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of trouble. I it, don't. It, it might be easier just to dig it up and move it somewhere than to have to keep spraying it. I would agree with that. Are you telling me that's what I need to do? Yeah, you probably need to yeah, do that. I, I don't know why I put it there <laughs> I anyway. Need to, I need yeah. to move mine that's got yeah, all the shrubs mine. around it that's blocking the air movement too. Right. And I have actually thought of, of moving mine, so I'll probably do that this, uh -huh. this fall. All right, Renee, there you have it. Circospora leaf spot. And uh, as you just heard, I need to move mine because mine is just like yours. <laughs> <laughs> need good air circulation, all right? So thank you for the question. Here's our next viewer email. What are some good native evergreen plants for a privacy border? Uh -huh. My yard is well draining at the top of a slope and the area I want to plant in has good humus from years of being left alone with leaves, etc. I have slowly reclaimed this area of my yard from invasive privet, honeysuckle, and English ivy. Wow. God, all of those are invasive. Wow. I would like to replant with natives if possible. I've had no trouble finding deciduous trees and shrubs, but the evergreens are a bit tougher to find. I would like a mix of sizes, shades, and textures. And this is from Randy right here in Memphis. So, of course, he's been doing his homework. Yes. I mean, this is good stuff. Yeah, he right. knows exactly how right. to create a landscape uh -huh. Uh -huh. design. That's great. And he's already got the deciduous stuff, so he wants right. some evergreen to fall yeah. into that. Good native evergreen plants. Native. And let's talk about the holly, the American holly, okay. Ilex opaca. They will get big, but it's slow growing, but that's a native holly. Okay. And berries are good for wildlife. Sure. Um, there is also the eastern red cedar that would I like be those. good. I mean, you know, you don't want a, a, a monoculture, so he's mm -hmm. going to mix it up and with his textures and forms. Um, Yopon holly, also oh, nice. native, right. would grow well. And of course, that's going to look completely different because it's going to have a smaller leaf mm -hmm. than the American holly. So there you've, you've got all different textures right there in those right. three plants. Um, and he mm -hmm. wants different sizes. Well, how about that native viburnum? It's uh, called arrowwood viburnum. And it's kind of scraggly, but that is an evergreen okay. viburnum. There's also laurels, which will do well, but I'm not 100% sure if those are exactly native. I know they are come up wild, but yeah. I don't know if they actually came, are native to the United okay. States. They may have come from somewhere and just kind of, but, but I don't see a whole lot of them coming up. So, so a laurel might be a, a plant that he could plant there. Okay. Um, evergreen shrubs, you know, there's a, Again, the, with the yopon hollies, there are dwarf yopon hollies that will get six feet tall. Because he is so, looking for yeah, privacy yeah, so borders. Okay. Privacy borders yeah, yeah. and stuff. So a few of those, um, some of them that are, if, if that's, I know those are the native ones that I can think of right now, but some non-native that he might want to add in a little bit are arborvitae. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah. I mean, it. I know they're not native. They're, but, they're yeah. not native, but yeah. there's a lot of, uh, it. Fast growing. It's yeah. fast growing, but it Spring. also um, it also helps Mother Nature. It may not be native, but but plant, but bugs and, and birds do use those. Okay. So he's wanting for for that. Um, also, Diodara cedar, hmm. the, the the cedar that does well here. And it, of course, it's not native, but it does really well. And it's a different form and texture from some of the others. Okay. And then just that. viburnums in general. Now, not all of them are evergreen, but some of them are deciduous. Uh, they have the flowers on them and they bloom. Mm -hmm. um, so they would attract a lot of uh, wildlife. Okay. 
You like those viburnums. I you? love viburnums. <laughs> it's a very underused, good plant. Okay. You think that'll work? Mm-hmm. All right, Randy. So there are some good ideas. Yeah, mm. and there's, there's also perennials they can do too, you know. Okay. But that not all of them would be native, like the Helleborus. They're not a native. Right. But they would be evergreen right. and okay. stay there. Coral bells are evergreen. Ferns are evergreen. So there's a lot of choices for evergreens for okay. his landscape and, and different sizes right, and textures. Right, that'd be his mix of sizes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and definitely textures for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it looks like he's off to a pretty, uh, pretty good start though. Humus. Just, got yeah. It, yeah. yeah, he's got good soil down good, there. Good soil. So yeah. a lot of this stuff will do very It'll well. Do very well. So thank you for the question, Randy. We appreciate that. All right. John, it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. Thank you much. All right. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org, and the mailing address is familyplot7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee, 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for joining us. We have been working on the flower bed Joel and planted for several years. If you want to see its evolution, go online to familyplotgarden.com. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe.